Hi, I'm so glad you're here. I can't wait to show you how I've decorated my home for Christmas this year. Come on in. Wait just a sec. You didn't think I was going to show you the end result already, did you? First, I have to show you some of the DIY projects and the process I went through to get to this point. So let's rewind the tape. I decided to keep the pink and green floral arrangement from last week's video and use that as the color inspiration for my foyer. I added some pink velvet ribbon to these brass reindeer that I found at a thrift store a couple years ago. And I added some purplish pink eucalyptus stems to this vase that I upcycled in a previous video. I thought about buying some new garland this year, but then I decided I would just make do with what I already had. Once I had it arranged, I used florist wire to hold it in place and I removed the white poinsettias that I had previously added to the garland. I used florist wire to attach some of my vintage ornaments to the garland, and I interspersed some inexpensive pink and green ornaments that I had purchased at Walmart. I added my remaining vintage ornaments to this small tree that I've had for a while. Because these ornaments are so fragile, I use really cheap ornament hooks that I can pinch completely closed when attaching them to the tree. That way they won't get knocked off the branches. I twisted a piece of florist wire through three of the ornaments and added those to the wreath as well. I found a few more of those pink eucalyptus stems in my stash and added a few to the garland and also to the wreath. Last week, I made a little Christmas village inside a thrift store suitcase which I sat on a dresser in my dining room. This week, I brought up an old metal arch from my basement to put behind the suitcase and I attached an old Christmas swag. Since my dining room is all blue and white, I decided to cut off the red berries from the swag and replace them with blueberries, which I cut from an old candle ring that I had in my stash. I used the same garland and ribbons that I had used last year on the china hutch and chandelier. The garland was from Walmart, and I just added the fake blueberries, which I think I purchased at Hobby Lobby. Some of you will remember that last year I made this tree collar out of cardboard and a thrift store throw blanket. So this year I decided to make a similar one to go around the white tree in my family room. I took apart two cardboard boxes of similar size and I cut off the top flaps of both boxes, but I don't cut off the bottom flaps because they add extra stability in keeping the tree collar standing upright. I added two panels from my second box to my first box using two-sided carpet tape, but duct tape would work just as well. Then I adhered the faux tin tiles from Dollar Tree to the sides of my cardboard boxes. When you cut these tiles, they detach from the sticky back, so you want to use whole tiles as much as possible. I used the two-sided carpet tape in the spots where I needed to fill in with a small strip of tile. I used a utility knife to cut off any of the cardboard box that extended beyond the top of the tiles. Because the Dollar Tree tiles look more like plastic than real tin, I painted mine with a coat of creamy chalk paint, and when the paint was dry, I lightly distressed it with a sanding block. Here's a tip. Cut the top of your cardboard box about a half an inch shorter than the height of your tile so you get a nice clean top edge. Unfortunately, on two sections of my tree collar, I had cut the cardboard perfectly even with the tile and you could see that top corrugated edge. 
so to disguise it, I ran a bead of caulk along that top edge of cardboard and then smoothed it out with my finger. And while I had the caulk gun out, I went ahead and ran a bead of caulk in the crack between the tiles too. This star was far too heavy for the top of my tree, so I used my angle grinder to remove that very heavy metal spring. Then I was able to just push the star down over the top branches. I usually hang a wreath over this mirror, but this year I decided to use a boxwood topiary tree that I had and just add a few white berries to give it that Christmas vibe. Then I decided to hang this beautiful blue and white needlepoint that I found at Goodwill several months ago for just a couple dollars. I hung it from a velvet ribbon tied to a clear command hook that was attached to the mirror. Decorating my mantle at Christmas is always a challenge because my husband doesn't like garland running along the bottom edge of the TV. So this year I decided just to use one strand of lightweight garland looped below the TV, which I attached to my ceramic mantle using a piece of duct tape at either end. Then I took apart a thrift store floral arrangement and then used those greenery picks to fill in on either side of the TV. Then I just added some spare ornaments, a couple bows, some pine cones, and some dried hydrangeas from my yard. One of my favorite rooms to decorate for the holidays is the kitchen, because let's face it, that's where I'll be spending most of my time. I bought a few new rolls of ribbon because I find that tying a bow to something is the cheapest way to turn just about anything into Christmas decor. I staged this area of my kitchen as a hot cocoa bar last year, but since no one in my family really drinks hot cocoa except for me, I decided just to stage it with my vintage thermoses this year. At first, I attached some Velcro strips to the tile so that I could hang a Christmas plate, but then decided I wanted to use some thrift store primitive art instead. This reindeer was a thrift store find from several years ago, and I just give him a fresh bow around his neck each year. I think the hand-stitched artwork is the perfect complement for my vintage thermoses. This curb find velvet chair is my new favorite place to decorate. To make it look Christmassy, I propped an old DIY sign along the back of the chair and hung my pill bottle faux brass bells. I also traded out the books for red and green ones and added some faux greenery, and then I stuck in some branches from a tree from my front yard. I added a couple red and white transfer wear plates to this kitchen cubby, and then I just stuck in a little greenery and red berries here and there and tied a few bows around some of my vintage kitchen utensils. Decorating the top of the cubby is always a challenge because the large bulletin board is so distracting. You'll have to check out last year's video for the story behind this Courier and Ives plate and house. For a unique garland, I decided to hang my vintage cookie cutters from a ribbon run across the top of the bulletin board. I later switched out the ribbon for a strand of Dollar Tree pip berries. I took the faux pumpkin out of this vintage coffee can, and Zoe and I replaced it with some faux holly. I also tied a ribbon to a skewer stick and stuck it in the can. One of the reasons that I fell in love with this house is because it had multiple built-in bookcases in the kitchen. I don't normally change out too much in the bookcases. I hang a couple small wreaths, and I add the little Christmas houses that I made from bird houses in one of last year's videos. 
I do like to frequently change out the decor on the top of this buffet. I moved these wooden candlesticks from another spot, and then I added a thrift store toolbox, which I filled with a thrift store floral arrangement. I added a star that I had made by hot gluing sticks together and then wrapping them with twine. I moved the glass beverage dispenser to another spot and added some faux greenery and berries in with the vintage music rolls. I also tied these storybook blocks that I made last year to the back of the bar stools. Well, I think I've discussed my decorating process for long enough. Now, let me show you how everything turned out. <laughs> Thank you.
I hope you enjoyed today's video and got some decorating ideas that you can use in your own home. Need more decorating ideas? Here's another video I think you might like.